Hey everyone, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, I've got my daughter's 2017 Ford Escape in here. Uh, two liter engine. And the problem with it, uh, I already did the, the work on it. I just, she had to come back so I could put a new cord on. But I'll explain that all toward the end of the video. But what was going on is she has a leak at the block heater. Now these block heaters are built, and I'll put some pictures up of them here. These block heaters are built in two pieces with a snap ring holding them in, and there's no ring in there. So essentially there's four pieces. And of course then there's a ring, a threaded ring, and a cable. But just the block heater itself, a snap ring, uh, an inner piece, and an outer, like a bushing that goes into the block. So what happens is they, uh, the O-ring uh, shrinks or gets deteriorated a little bit, and they start to leak a little bit. I think it's fairly common. I think this is a 16 to 18 issue. I'm not sure on the two liters. I think the 1.5 is a different block heater in it, but they may still have the same issue. But uh, 2017 for sure uh, has that problem. So right here, it's the, the ring I was talking about that holds the cable onto the block heater. And I'll get that out of the way. And this is the little O-ring. And I'll give you the size of the one I used. Uh, I think it was a 20 millimeter, but um, I'll, I'll find it. But these are like a silicone O-ring, and they're quite soft. And I put the Vatron in it. And it hasn't leaked, so I think it's good. All right, let's, uh, I'll show you how I got at the block heater. It's, it's not that hard. You'll need a 35 millimeter socket, deep socket. And before you start, you might want to get yourself a new block heater cord because uh, I have a feeling they're probably all going to be the same. This one here, the cord just disintegrated, just trying to get it out. And you won't get it, if it's the same as this one, you won't get it out. So you might just as well buy yourself a new one. And Ford wants almost $200 for a block heater cord, uh, a factory OEM, OEM one. You, you don't need to buy that. And if you want to go ahead and buy a new block heater instead of changing the oil ring, well, that's up to you. It's going to cost you close to 200 bucks. There may be some aftermarket ones. I don't know. You'll have to do your own research on that. But to do a new block heater, new cord for this car was $600 Canadian. So we're going to get it down to an oil ring and a $30 block heater cord. So let's get in it. I'll show you what we did here. All right, first thing, you might as well pull this cover off because uh, it makes it a little easier because you have to go in through here. So you just pull up on the cover. The back ones are a little bit finicky, but they'll come. Patience. And uh, I would wait until the engine cools off because you're going to lose antifreeze and it's going to be on the floor. Okay, with a 35 millimeter socket, this is an impact socket, but that's fine. It, it doesn't matter really because there's lots of room to work. It's just a little tight getting in there. You might want to get a light, but I already had had the O-ring changed, like I said. So you go in here like that, get on the the old block heater. You may have to to move a few things out of the way there, but it's way down under. You'll get in here quite a ways. I got my hand on it right there now. So that's what you're looking for right there. So these Fords, there is a drain on them. But I couldn't get it open, so I just let it go into a pan, drain pan, the antifreeze. Uh, so you'll want to get yourself some antifreeze before you start this. It took about a gallon to refill it, completely filled. And I see she's never lost an, uh, not a, uh, a drop since I changed the O-ring. So that's how you uh, get at the block heater to take it out. Like I said, uh, get yourself a drain pan, some antifreeze, and you might want to, if it's Depending on where you're doing this, if it's uh, in the dead of winter, I don't know when you're watching this video, you might want to get a new cord, and I'll show you the old cord. So here's the old cord, and this rubber right here, if you can see this or not, it is it just falls right apart. Even getting what was left of this cord out of the old block heater was a struggle. It just completely crumbled, and I'll show you a piece of that. So this is a piece of what came out of it. So there's no way you're, if it's like this, you're not going to get this cord back off in a usable condition. All right, so this is the O-ring I was telling you about right here. And I, I said it was 20 millimeter, but it's actually, uh, the one I used was a 28 and 3.1. So 28 millimeter and a 3.1 millimeter in thickness. If you can find one slightly 
thinner, like less than 3.1, then go for it. It was, it was quite tight to get in, but it hasn't leaked, uh, it hadn't pinched it. And of course, this is the ring we're talking about. So what I did, I put it in my vise. I, put the two, I took the two pieces apart with the snap ring pliers. And you want to get yourself a good pair of snap, snap ring pliers. So I use uh, channel lock ones. And these are the actual ends I used. Uh, they comes with several different ones. Some are 90 degree turn. You might want to try those. But don't go with a cheap set, uh, set of snap ring, ring pliers for this. Uh, that snap ring is in there. And it, when you put it back in, you push the two pieces together in a vise, but not on the heating element. You got to go on the edge and push the edge, uh, the two pieces in one inside the other, and then put the snap ring back in. And I use the snap ring because this one has a multi uh, direction, so I use two different ways on it. So you have to fiddle with it some, you get it in. But don't cheap out on snap ring pliers because it'll cause you more aggravation than it's worth. Now these are channel locked. There's a lot of other good ones out there, but channel lock, I, I've always found a good product. All right, so the cord. So this cord here, I got it on Amazon, and it's uh, designed to fit an F-150 Ford of around the same year. Uh, this tab, this little ground tab, you'll have to bend it, or I'll have to when I get to go do it. I'll have to bend it around to ground this system, and then there's the two uh, 110 AC plug holes right there. There's a six foot cord, should be long enough for this little, uh, S, uh, escape to get it back in place. So now I'm going to put it in the car and I'll show you how it turns out. Well, there it is on. I don't know if you, I'm going to see if I can put you down to see it. There it is on in place. That went on very easy. Uh, I bent the little tab back and I went underneath here and I just shoved it in place. And that went on uh, no problem at all. The nut threaded on. Now you don't have to crank those nuts on hard, just enough to hold the plug from coming out. So while you're putting your hand down in here, your hands, you can actually look down through here. You won't be able to see it from here because there's not a light down there, but you can look down through right between there and you'll see that block heater. So very simple, uh, I rerouted the, the uh, heater cord the way it was from the factory. We use a trickle charger all the time on my, on my kids' cars because both of them work from home and their cars don't get a lot of use. So I like to keep the batteries topped up, save the batteries. But that's it. Very simple to do. So I think anyone can do it uh, if you have a few uh, tools to work with. Well, that's it, everyone. Pretty simple job to do. Uh, you save yourself some money by taking it into a mechanic shop or a dealer. Just remember, don't do it while the engine's hot. Um, just common sense there. Don't, don't burn yourself. Let it cool down so it's tolerable. And uh, that's how you fix a leaky block heater in one of these Ford Escapes. And knowing that the F-150s uh, and I think F-350s, they all, in this year, that range of years, and I don't know for sure how far they went with those particular block heaters, but they're probably all leaking. Um, and it's not a lot of uh, leakage, uh, but it was taking probably an eighth of a gallon of antifreeze every couple of weeks but uh, it probably would get worse. Anyway, uh, everyone, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.